Welcome to the Shack of M1 GAO. Today's victim on the bench here is a Kiska T12 soldering station and it developed a fault fairly recently which uh, I've been attempting to fix. Well, I have, have managed to fix pending a few parts. Uh, what happened is um, inside the handle of the solder station here a couple of the wires had to come, I think the positive one, the, the red one had come detached and um, shorted out to ground which had caused a, a fault inside the actual controller. Um, very briefly how this works, this uh, is a interchangeable tip, so you slide it in and out of this collar here, so let's try and keep it in focus, these tips slide in and out of this sort of electrical collar. There's a um, ground here which is just a electrical ground so that when you touch circuit boards and stuff with, with this it's grounded and then there's a negative and positive terminal which go to the heater. The, the heater assembly is 8 ohm a resistive heater and there's also a, a thermocouple near the tip in series with the with the heater. What that means is that when the controller is passing current through the two terminals, so positive here, negative here, the 8 ohm resistive heater gets hot, makes the tip hot, etc. Every so often the controller will uh, stop supplying current here and just look at the voltage potential difference across these two pins, which of course will correspond to the temperature from the thermocouple, and uh, the controller can then read this um, and infer temperature of the, of the tip from it. And in order to do that, it also needs to know what the room temperature is. It needs to have what's called a cold junction temperature. Um, and so this is this thermistor here. This is a um, neg negative temperature coefficient thermistor. Just a resistor, 10k uh, resistance. It's actually a, a, an MF58 Mike Fox 58, 10k 1% um, uh, thermistor. And there's also a inside this Ross stickered uh, little tube is a if you can hear the ball vibrating but it's a shake to wake um, just like a micro not a micro switch like a ball bearing in a tube thing and as it as it moves around it sort of sends pulses down this blue wire um, the the sleeve is earthed and that's the green connection here and this blue one is the shake to wake pin um, the the black cable here is the heater current um, negative and also the white wire is from that is the um, the cold junction sensor and then the red one on its own is the positive supply it's 24 volt DC so that's how that's roughly how that works um, inside the controller this red wire goes into a into a, a p-channel uh, power fet say like a SOIC 8 um, SOIC 8 um, a switching transistor, not a switching transistor, a, a P PFET, which um, is uh, I think it's a Toshiba part, which is just a silicon a PMOS transistor. It's um, nothing too fancy. Uh, I think it's like a, a 10 or so amp part, 13 amp I think the data sheet said. Um, so let's take this apart and I'll show you where this goes. I've already kind of taken it apart and so I'll show that here. The PCB is very fairly fairly standard in these sorts of things. Um, and you can see here this looks really messy, but I promise it wasn't my work. Um, uh, these all of these four pins, so five, six, seven, eight, are all connected together. They are all one side of the uh, uh, um, P FET, P channel FET. And then pins one, two, and three are the other side, um, and then they, 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 the pin four is the gate. Um, what actually happened is that the the, the transistor had shorted drain to drain to source. The, the FET had shorted drain to source, so it was always supplying current uh, into the into the into the um, heating element, and irrespective of what the the microprocessor, the little STM32103, thought was happening, and so even even when it thought it thought it should be able to read the temperature because this FET should have been off, it was obviously short circuits, so they're still supplying current and so the results it got back were nonsense and it was just throwing all kinds of errors onto the onto the screen. The actual part I just tucked in here 
it's just a little little um, Soic 8 part which I've desoldered here uh, and so I've, I'm waiting for another one of these to arrive it's a, um, a TPC Tango Papa Charlie TPC uh, 8107 is the part number and yeah it's just a, a p-channel FET in that package this is a version uh, 3.1 PCB um, and otherwise it's been okay I've had it for a couple of years um, inside the, the box is also a um, let's put this somewhere out of the way a moment inside here is also just very generically a, a switch my power supply that's clearly made for the soldering station here it's labeled here soldering station power supply uh, just a standard switch mode power supply looks pretty respectable inside nothing amazing but also just absolutely fine um, and yeah it's, it's as I say it's been, been absolutely fine up until recently and the cable in shorted and just popped that fat and I figure there's quite a bit of current behind it from the sort of crack that it made when it when it failed but uh, what happened before was you just got error in big letters and I think it said B1 in the top left corner um, but uh, yeah other than that it, it, it um, was completely dead uh, now without that FET it just reads the temperature all the time and obviously doesn't heat up um, so replacing that FET with a, with a P-channel 1 uh, either identical or, or similar would, would get it going again and so I quickly tacked something on here and that's restored it to life um, now I'm just waiting for the correct part which I've ordered already probably not that useful to 99.9% .9 of people but um, if it is useful give the video a thumbs up if not no worries and uh, hopefully um, hopefully yours doesn't have the same fate cheers <laughs>